Well, welcome back to the channel. Before we jump into today's project, I need to explain a little backstory about why we're going to do what it is that we're going to do. A few years ago, my friends Chris, Mike, TJ, and myself decided to take a trip down to Tennessee to no, go off-roading at a off-road park down there called Windrock. Keep going, you're fine. And believe it or not, this is actually a lot of fun as frustrating as it might look here from this video but this is my Why friend chris here trying to get up there. this rock ledge in his jeep and you might notice that his jeep has you know Back it up. smaller tires they're kind of tiny now he eventually there. made it up this ledge now, but he did certainly struggle with it bit. and Part of the reason why it was a struggle was because of the size of the tires. The larger the tires, often the easier it is to get up an obstacle like this. Now this is my friend TJ in his Jeep. Uh, TJ didn't struggle quite as much as Chris did getting up this ledge. Partly because he has a Rubicon, which means he can lock his the differentials right on that tire, right of on his rock, axles, so. but also because he has larger tires than Chris does. The larger tires not only give you a little bit more ground clearance, so but because they're wider, up, they give you so a little bit more and traction and as well. Go. There you go. There you go. go, go. Got it. All right. And this is yours truly in my Jeep. Now my Jeep is different than the others, partly because it's only a two door. So it has a little bit of a different breakover angle. And my tires are bigger than TJ's still. These are 37 inch tires. And again, they give me a little bit more traction because they're wider and they give me a little bit more ground clearance on top of that. Now I did struggle a little bit, but I guarantee had I had smaller tires on this Jeep, this would have been even more difficult. Having the larger tires is definitely an advantage. And now here is my friend Mike. Mike has even larger tires. His tires are 39 inches. And here's where the advantage really shows because he just walked up all of this almost effortlessly. <laughs> but having those big tires on a Jeep certainly has its side effects. Now let's zoom in a little bit here on this illustration of a Jeep Wrangler. Now these horizontal black lines overlaid on the graphic represent the frame of the Jeep. Now we'll add in the tires and as I turn the Jeep and we rotate the tires from left to right, you know, no problem. They just turn the Jeep and they steer it in the direction you're going. That's fine for smaller tires, but what about when we put bigger tires on the Jeep? As this illustration demonstrates, because I've got bigger and wider tires on the Jeep, they have a tendency to bump into the frame rails when you turn them either hard to the left or hard to the right. Well, the fix for this is relatively simple. All we need to do is cut some notches in the frame, and that gives more room for the tires. So. I think we should do that. What could possibly go wrong? Well, before we go chopping holes in a perfectly good frame on Mike's Jeep, let's talk a little bit about what we're going to use to do it. We're going to use this Best Arc BTC 500 DP. This is a 50 amp plasma cutter. Full disclosure, Best Arc did send this to me so I can review it on the channel. Um, there were no preconceived criteria on how I was going to review it or any particular slant on a review. 
And I know I'm asking you to trust me, but trust me, they had nothing to do with what's in this content. They didn't ask for anything other than for me to do this video. Well, what comes in the box? Uh, there's this air hose, which I have no idea why they included it because on the back of the plasma, there's a standard air fitting for your typical garage air hose. Also in here were some instructions, some extra consumables, a little wrench for the consumables and some Teflon tape. There's the plasma torch itself as well as a ground clamp. I have no idea if the tips and consumables are standard, but I would imagine these would be available easily enough on Amazon. Connecting the torch seems pretty simple. There's this connector here on the bottom for the air as well as the um, electrode. And then there's this electrical connector, which I assume is for the trigger. I don't know what else it could be for. And then there's this red wire, which is for the pilot arc. And then the ground clamp just connects to this DINS connector that's on the top of those other three. Well, as I mentioned, this comes with a standard air fitting on the back of it. Now, I did put a simple desiccant air dryer in line with the air supply here. I do understand that if you put too much moisture through a plasma cutter that you can actually destroy the tips and consumables and possibly do irreparable damage to the machine. Well, I have this plugged into a 220 volt outlet in the shop. We'll power it on. Um, it does have a pretty nice bright uh, display. It's pretty clear to read. The dial on the right allows you to adjust the amperage. And this other dial here on the front is the regulator for adjusting the air pressure. And according to the manual, I want to adjust this so that I have two green bars showing. It's 15 inch. Well, I've used a plasma cutter all of about two times, and that was back when I was in welding school during a MIG welding class, and it was a big 80 amp Lincoln Electric. I imagine this one right here might be just a little bit different than that one, but we're going to start small and see what this thing does. That was just 15 amps. This is maybe quarter inch. Bench maybe three eighths. Okay, we should have no trouble cutting through this.
I'm impressed. I mean, it's not the cleanest cut in the world. This is aluminum. Well, easy enough to clean up. Oh, no, I guess it just doesn't spark as much. Well, the aluminum doesn't spark nearly as much. Not sure what this is. Something else here now. There's this one. I'm impressed. <laughs> I know it's not going to cut through this one inch piece of dirty steel, but you know, what the heck, this would be fun. Well, it doesn't come across on video, but this thing is filling my shop with stinky smoke. It's spewing all the sparks out the side, which means it's not... Uh -huh. Penetrating. <coughs> yeah, it didn't go through. How far did it go through? Yeah, probably about halfway. So half inch is probably the limit. <coughs> Well, now that I know everything there is to know about plasma cutting, let's go chop up a perfectly good Jeep. Well, if you thought I was kidding about chopping up a perfectly good Jeep frame, I wasn't. Um, but it's not just as simple as that. This actually is a kit that Mike bought that has a template that tells you exactly where to notch out your Jeep frame. And then there's a piece of material that will weld in. So right now I'm getting an outline drawn of the template so we know where we need to cut. Do you want more light, Greg? No. I just need to draw a line. We have some more free light right here if you want it. I mean, I'd love to go to Moab, but not in February. Yeah, when when TJ and I were out there for EJS and the first year we went, man, it was cold out there because it was windy. It wasn't so much the outside temperature, it was everything else. All right, here goes nothing. Well, I might be crazy, but I'm not entirely stupid, so I'm not gonna cut right up on the lines here for this first side anyway. I'm going to cut these a little bit back. Yeah, it's gonna create some additional work for us in grinding out this section of frame in order to fit in the patch panel. But to be honest with you, I wasn't really sure how straight I was gonna be able to drag the torch. And I didn't wanna create a problem where I was gonna to have to start patching with the weld and everything else. So we're just kinda of gonna take this slow and cut it out just a little bit at a time. Or 
Well, the torch did struggle with a couple of spots here on the frame, but that's only because there were sections here that were three layers of steel, which just ended up being a little bit thicker than what this thing could actually get through. So I just took my time and there were a couple of spots where I had to go over it multiple times in order to get through those thicker sections and of course having all this molten slag falling down on top of me well I've had more fun doing other things that's for sure Well, this is one of those sections where it was a little bit thicker and you can see the sparks kind of blowing back at me. That's telling me that it's not cutting all the way through and I need to kind of slow down in those areas and give the plasma a chance to burn through that thicker area. see where it didn't cut through all, all the way through. This piece here was a lot thicker and it was just easier to finish the cut from the inside. We did end up spending a bunch of time with a flap disc and a cutoff wheel and that was only because I didn't want to get right up on top of that line for you know my first time using a plasma cutter on a real project. It actually ended up taking us a few hours to get this thing 
as right as we could get it. Uh, and that was just trying to be extra careful. And there were three of us really kind of trading off using the grinder until we got the fit that we really needed for the patch panel. With the notch now completely clean and prepped for welding, I can place this panel here that came in the kit and we'll just tack it in a couple of places Does that look right? and yeah. make sure it's right. Yeah, I think that's right about. Yeah, watch your eyes. Well, I will say that this isn't absolutely perfect, but I'm a bit of a perfectionist, but there is enough gap here that I feel like I will get some decent weld penetration. Right now, I just want to tack it in place so that I know that it's not going to move before I finish welding it. Done. Yep, I'm done. Done. All right, let's cut the other one. Put we some JB weld in there. Fill the rest in with caulk. Caulk, caulk. Well, honestly, by caulk, the time we have yeah, the primer and, and some paint. They didn't weld it to the right spot. Are you happy with that line yeah. over there, Greg? Yep. I guess you could call it that. I'm welding it in place. <laughs> you know when you're ready. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Well, this spot here really didn't have enough gap in it, so I really want to make sure that there's good weld penetration all the way through. So to ensure that, I'm just going to make the gap. So using a cutoff wheel here, and I'm just grinding the seam here until it goes all the way through. That way I know that I'll have a full penetration weld when I'm finished. Hey Greg, Jeep. the ground's on No, there. they can't put it on the Jeep then. Yeah. yeah, just saw them last week. Now that you went to the county, I never seen them. I get uh, occasional emails from them. Now to do this the sort of correct way, I should have ground down these tacks, but instead uh, I'm just going to weld in between the tacks. We are going to grind this down flush. I think Mike originally was going to leave the welds exposed, but even though they were not terrible looking welds, I still think it was going to look better if we grind these smooth uh, before we paint them. Well, after I had everything welded up, uh, I went ahead and ground down the welds until they were at least reasonably contoured with the frame. And then we'll give it a coat of primer and then some top coat. I mean, it's not perfect down here. It could, could have been ground a little bit better. 
Well, there's certain things that I care about, and there's certain things that I don't, and that's on my list that I don't give a shit. <laughs> well, we did the same thing to the other side of the Jeep, but I didn't bother getting any of that on video. Well, I didn't get any video of the Jeep put back together or any of that, but suffice it to say, Mike is extremely happy with this modification to his Jeep. And I think there might be a couple of friends out there that might want to do the same thing to theirs. And I will say that the Best Arc Plasma Cutter really did everything I needed it to do for this project. I mean, did I take this thing all the way to the full extent of what it might be capable of? No, I didn't. But that really wasn't going to be my intention with this video. I really just wanted to use it on a project. And this was a project that came up. There was another one that I was going to use this for, but it ended up getting canceled. Um, but with this one here for Mike's Jeep, it was the perfect use for a plasma cutter. It certainly was going to be hacking away at that Jeep with an angle grinder. I think it would have been torturous to try to get that to line up. The second side, I will say, went a lot smoother than the first. It probably took maybe 25% of the time. But for a $250 plasma cutter, I don't know that you could go wrong with this thing. And I think there is a $50 coupon on Amazon, link in the description, that you could get this thing for even less. Well, I think that's going to wrap up this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Don't forget to leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.